I think I've just reached my hour, hour's presentation. Uh, before I do sign off, uh, I would like to ask Lynn Larry, uh, who has had it very easy this afternoon, all he had to do was pass out the literature, I'd like to ask Len if there's anything he would like to add before we bring this to a close. If I can just quickly pick up on a couple things. Uh, as all of you in the solid state FCR dial control force will find that you've got a lot of these fast acting rectifier type fuses in your equipment, adjustable speed drives, uh, UPS systems, and so forth. We call it a Form 101 access. This is the most precise most exacting type fuse that would be used in anything that you would be applying fuse to. Generally speaking, you are not yourself involved with these fuses because they're going to come in on some form of a package unit. I caution you very much. These things are not just put into a given system. Uh, the information we pass out to the OEM that normally builds this equipment, he might use this as a starting guide for selecting the proper fuse, but just about all of it goes through trial and error, or more specifically, research and development to find out the proper <laughs> fuse that's going to protect, <laughs> protect this equipment. And our energy left, and we're talking I square T, this is the bugger, I square T, that's the energy that does the thermal damage on a fault. This is what we're really concerned with. And on that particular type of Form 101 Amtrap, I will caution you, this is one of our key commercials. No one matches anywhere close to the left through limitations that we have. They are great. I urge you, I caution you, to make sure you replace these rectifier, fast-acting, solid-state fuses with whatever came in with the equipment. Maybe I say that because I think we're on about 90% of the equipment. Okay. <laughs> but there is a reason. And in many of these cases, we are a sole source of supply only because somebody else cannot accomplish the same mission. Yes, it's a commercial, but I'm cautioning you because if you let considerably more energy let through, you may be doing a hell of a lot more damage. The information on this 101 Amtrap is in your equipment. Normally, again, you yourself are not going to be applying it, but watch your replacement. I urge one other thing, UL Class R, this arcade business that Warren's referring to, a very important, and page 51 of this fuse application guide is the statement, and this is the gist of it. Warren said a conventional Class H fuse is 10,000 amps, where you are packaging a fuse switch and a fuse. Bear in mind, Standard, UL standard 98 says that a switch can be rated for more than 10,000 amps withstand. It can be rated 50, 100, or 200,000 amps. And most switches can be rated for 200,000 amps. Most heavy duty safety switches are rated for 200,000 amps if you use a class R fuse, and that doesn't mean it has to be shown, a UL class R fuse, and put them into factory furnish or field installed reject clips. The switches normally are not shipped into the field this way. The way the switch is shipped into the field is only a 10,000 amp switch and I don't give a damn how good the fuse is. As far as you out is concerned, if you do not put a class R fuse and if it does not go into a reject on that fuse switch, either factory furnish or field installed, that reverts back to being a 10,000 amp installation. Tom hit it on the nose before. There's probably hardly an application in here that is under 10,000 amps in most parts of your plant. I think it's an extremely important thing for you to understand. You have to have the class R fuse and the reject clip arrangement if you want that switch to be called 200,000 amps. I will say one, uh, two other things, if I may, quickly. Can that thing be uh, raised? The cost of fusing itself, generally speaking, I think is immaterial to do the job correctly. But I thought you'd be interested. There's also no damn sense in blowing your money and incorrectly. Oh, it's the wrong one? OK. <laughs> If this fuse is 
$1x. And that's the most popular type fuse, Trionic fuse, John, RK5. This is the day in, day out used fuse. If you're going to go to this, I just thought you'd like to know you're talking a better RK1. Same time delay, you're talking $1.89. 89% more money. Great if that's what you need. I just thought you should know the cost relationship. If you go to the RK1, we're talking $1.65 X. I didn't put the X over here. And if you go to the non-delay RK5, you are talking $0.67 cents X. In other words, all we're trying to do is, here's the choices. Oh, I didn't put the J in there, and it's around a dollar. And all we're saying, there's the choices. Warren's tried to give you a quick idea. Do you need time delay or do you not need time delay? Do you need RK1 or do you not need RK, or do you need RK5? You might as well make a selection on what you really need, and it doesn't hurt to have a little idea. If you want to use the safest thing that takes care of everything, go to this one. Bump, 